Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. The name of the show is A Conversation with Fred. Every Friday, we bring in some outstanding people from our community that tell you about things going on, agencies they might run or be a part of, and they try to share information with you. Well, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and let me, a little advertising and tooth serum here before I get going. Hospice is one of my favorite topics, and Heather, we talked about this before, mm -hmm. simply because you guys did a fantastic job. The men and women of hospice helped my mother, and uh, for that we'll be forever grateful and help the family. And also, I have to be fair to my audience, I just went through your volunteer training. Right. Fantastic program. Thank you. And uh, your staff does a good job, and we're talk hoping we talk a little bit about volunteers. So Heather, how about introduce yourself and tell me all about Compass Hospice. Sure, sure. I'm Heather Herreri, and I'm the CEO of Compass. Uh, we, mo most recently, we changed our name. So we've been Compass Regional Hospice for right. a while now, but now we're just Compass. Okay. And the reason that we did that um, rebranding effort was because we want to make sure that the community knows that we do much more than just hospice. Okay. You know, um, and that's what shocked me in, mm -hmm. in my orientation. Right. Uh, you're going to talk about it. I didn't realize you're not just Queen Anne's County. No. And you're just mm -hmm. not helping families go through this transition. But go ahead. I'll, yes. Take me away. Yeah. So I'm um, glad you mentioned that about our other counties. We are in Queen Anne's, Kent, and Caroline County, and we have been now since 2014. Okay. So it's been several years now. Um, prior, we were Hospice of Queen Anne's, then we became Compass Regional Hospice, and now just Compass. Okay. Can I ask why did why did it become a multi uh, uh, county thing? Just sure. money wise, or just made sense to help people? Or well, so most counties do have their own hospice right. um, organization. Some counties across the state of Maryland have lots of hospice organizations oh, okay. because they're larger metropolitan more people, areas, sure, more sure. people. So there's there's more services to be needed uh, by people. Um, but for on the eastern shore, there's there's a hospice per county or was. Okay. Um, back in the day, Shore um, Regional Health, which is right. now University of Maryland, right, right. Shore Regional, they were the owner of the hospice services through Shore Home Care and Hospice right. um, for Caroline and Kent County, and we were just Queen Anne's. Uh, but regulations were tightening and it was getting more and more expensive to provide hospice services within a county, especially a very small county. And of course, you get your reimbursement from fundraising, but, but the majority of your reimbursement comes from Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance. Okay. So the smaller amount of patients that you're providing it's services to... It's a financial to, burden. It's a financial burden. You're like burden. the community college, right? Exactly. We're not big enough to have Queen Anne's just because we need to have five counties. So you've got to do correct. the same thing. Okay. That's Makes correct. Sense. Makes sense. That's correct. So we have By the way, let me just interrupt. Mm -hmm. You had a golf tournament. You talked yeah. about fundraising. All yes. right. I would brag at some point, you keep well, going your train of thought, okay. but tell all those golfers out there, next year we expect them there, right? Well, we were sold out. We, congratulations. Yes. Terrific. But I'll finish. That was the past Monday, right? Yeah. Okay, it was ahead. just, it was this Monday. This Monday, right. Yeah. 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 So we had the opportunity um, through the hospital system to um, get the certificate of needs, if you will, what you need to provide hospice in each county. They were wanting to get out of the hospice business. I had gone to them, to Ken Cosell, to say, if you're ever interested, we we would love to regionalize okay. here. Um, so that is what happened in 2014. Right. It just makes, it makes dollars sense and it services sense. Hey, uh, we're the Eastern Shore. Right. Whether we like it or not, we're limited in, in a couple of things, and population and money is one of them. Right? That's correct. Okay. Makes That's sense. correct. Good correct. call. Yeah. So back to the golf tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have our annual golf tournament this last Monday. We were so excited to be able to have a tournament this year, you know, post COVID, COVID yes. right? Yeah. You're still going through it a bit. Um, but it was an outside event, and we did sell out. We had 136 golfers. Where, you? Where was it now? It was at Prospect Bay okay. Country Club. Okay, great course. Great mm -hmm. course. It was, and it was a great day. It was hot. Yes, it was 90 it, degrees, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, yes, but it was sunny. At least it's not like okay. today where it's pouring down raining. I'll and, complain at the end of the show about the weather today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so we raised approximately fifty-two thousand oh, dollars. Congratulations! Great job. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're so blessed to have the community support yeah. um, through not only our golf tournament but through our state treasurer's resale shop on Kent, in Kent Town Market, our appeal letters that go out to people. Um, it's a it, 
it's amazing people don't realize how much money we really have to fundraise even though we get reimbursement okay. from from insurance. So these golf tournaments, uh, your retail shop or whatever, these are important to help you out and people out there say, how can I help? I haven't got time. You got a, you got a checkbook and that yeah. always works. And you golfers, come on, you can play with me next year. Right? Okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, anybody can give. And I tell you, there's no gift is too small. Sure. You know, if everybody gave um, throughout the counties, then we would be, we're, we're fine, you know, no matter what, what the level is. So, yeah. And, and I tell you, you talked about the financial support, but I, I know that you just finished our volunteer training, right. like you said in the and beginning. A great program. Yeah, thank you. And that's another thing that we're always in need of is volunteers. And hey, let me give it a second. Mm -hmm. If someone's out there watching this right now and they said, you know what, this hospice is great, I have, I, and we'll get the volunteers, I'd like to send them 50, 100 bucks or five bucks. Where do you want to send? And remember, you get free plugs this show. In my sure. show, everybody gets free plugs. Thank you. Well, they could go on our website, okay. uh, compassregionalhospice.org, um, and give online there. Um, it's a secure, you know, giving site there. Or they can send it into our office at 160 Courseville Drive, Centerville, okay. Maryland. Now, give them that website again. Uh, www.compassregionalhospice.org. And you have no problem with people just sending in unsolicited checks and say, look, this is such a great program. Absolutely. Okay. And you said $5, $500, $5,000, you don't care. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That. And, you know, another thing that um, I'd like for people to think about is leaving us in their will. You know, for the the, the future mm -hmm. of Compass, I, it might be way past my tenure here right. as the director, but um, hopefully this organization will continue for, you know, decades and decades and decades. And so giving gifts um, when people pass in their will. Um, you which encourage is that. Yeah. Called a planned Good gift. Idea. Okay. Um, it really also helps uh, charities okay. out over the years. Excellent idea. So we've got golf tournaments. You can you have your, talk about your where you sell things on Kent Island. Is it a retail uh, sale? Yeah, What's the name again? Yeah, it's, a, it's a state treasures. Okay. And it is a upscale resale shop. Is that where Kay Dermody used to work? Yeah. I remember that name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Those yeah, of yeah. you who remember Colonel Dermody yes. and Kay Dermody? Yes. I used to hear about that in Daily Mass every day. Fred, don't throw that stuff away. Give it to us. Now, That's tell what, right. Tell us what it is and yeah. how they can donate stuff. Uh-huh. So a, a couple things. So it's mostly clothing. It's okay. men and women's. Mm -hmm. Um, clothing, it's obviously very, you know, used clothing, but right, nice. Right. Um, also shoes and some little knick-knack collectibles and books. Okay. Um, and you donate those, you drop them right off at Kent now, Town where Market. Is the okay, give me, a, give me your address and a phone number or whatever. I don't remember the number don't off the head, but it's, it's Kent Town Market they'll, in they'll Chester, Maryland. Okay. And you can just drive up and ask if they'll accept these? Is that yep. how it works? Yeah, okay. you drive up. And you just say you have donations, or you could shop there, okay. and that gives What's money it? to it? us too. And tell me, all types of clothing. Yep. And knickknacks, little angels and porcelain yep. things like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Don't books. tell my wife; she'll be there. <laughs> Play and stay home. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's very reasonable. Okay. Um, so you can give your things, you can donate your things to us, you can shop there, mm -hmm. or you can volunteer there. We're okay. always looking for volunteers at Estate well, Treasures. Well, Kay used to brag about you every day at Daily Math at Mother of Sorrow. She would mm -hmm. try to get people to donate clothes, and she'd say, you got to come down there and look at what we've got. So until she went to Massachusetts, you were getting daily advertisements, oh. and she used to brag about it. Well, thank is, you. Okay. We, Kay is one of our amazing past volunteers, and we have so many amazing volunteers yeah. that are advocates for us on, on a daily basis. Go to Okay, that's, if you want to go a different order, please, we've got sure. plenty of time. Tell me about volunteers. Okay, maybe I'm sitting at home, like me, 74 years old, you know, and I can't play golf every day. I think I can, but I'd like to, hey, retail say that'd be kind of fun. Just show up where, or how do you want them to do it? Well, they would call Robin Afron, okay. who is our volunteer coordinator, okay. and she will ask some questions about what their interests are, because we have so many volunteer opportunities. Right, right. In the State Treasures Resale Shop, you can volunteer. There's a whole sheet of paper in your, in your booklet you give us, yeah. you know, listing all the things you can right. do. You can cook. Yeah, you can cook. Those of you who say, I don't want to be seen, well, you know what? We can cook once, right. the, I guess once the virus, is that 
cooking? Uh, are they cooking yet? Or no, 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 okay. no okay. but 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 we do have volunteers back in our hospice center. Okay, they help to greet. They help pay, you know pass meals and things like that. Uh, be companion to the patients and their families. We have uh, volunteers that go into patients' homes okay. um, to uh, give the caregiver a little bit of a respite so they can run to the store and such like that. But if you're if you're thinking, gosh, that's not my thing. I don't mm -hmm. want to be with somebody who is ill or or at the end of life, you can volunteer in other capacities. You can do an office administrative oh, volunteer. front desk people volunteers? No, well, we have oh. a full-time staff, but okay. we do have volunteers that cover They're all the delightful, phones. that front. I'm always yeah. dropping stuff off, and they mm -hmm. help you, they, you know, mm -hmm. yada, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we have that, and we have volunteers that help with our uh, events, okay. like the golf, the golf tournament. tournament right? You need we, someone to sit at every hole, right, yeah. to help them out. Yeah, sure. we had tons of volunteers okay. there. So there's all kinds of opportunities. So you just call the office, 443-262-4100, and ask for Robin Afron, who's our volunteer coordinator. Okay. And she does a great job, okay? Thank you. Uh, Heather, you mentioned office, the uh, center. If people are going, hey, this was a great idea, but where are they? Where yeah. are you? Yeah. So um, our main administrative office is 160 Courseville Drive. Okay. So that's right, right in Centerville. Mm -hmm, okay. Right in Centerville, right right where the Queenstown Bank is on the corner at the light, right by the Food Lion Shopping Center. And keep going past the YMCA, and you got to follow the road all the way to and, the end, right? And that's yes. the center. Yes. Then okay. that's our center. So that's the center is tucked back on Comet Drive. Okay. Um, Beautiful spot, by the way. Yeah, Good thank spot. you, thank you. Now that if uh, someone wants to, now you really don't want people there, do you? Because of the COVID virus, and I mean, no, people, they, people, oh, can, visit. Oh, they Pe can, visit. people okay. can visit. People can visit their loved ones. Um, we have limited, we, we limit the amount of people that come in at one time just okay. for precautions with with COVID still. Um, but yeah, we advocate for people to come see okay. see their families, their friends, and loved Who's ones. Who's there? How many people are there? What's going on? Professional staff and people who are in need of care and help. Well, at our hospice center, it's a 10-bed facility, okay. and we just finished renovations. We have been under renovations um, all through COVID, which has been yeah. a little bit of a challenge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but we got through it. So we had six beds there before. They were all private rooms, and now we have 10. Okay, so the 10 pe you have 10 people at a time there? Mm -hmm. Okay. 10 patients at a time. Uh, we have nursing, uh, nurse practitioners, certified nursing plenty assistants. Plenty of staff. Every time I've gone there, there's plenty of staff that one yes. room where they all say, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it's a nice bit. There's a nice sitting area, very yes. comfortable for the family. Yeah. And now it's the nice new um, big grand entrance that you okay. come in and yes. there's a reception desk and you get greeted there. And one side is our 10 bed hospice center, but the other side is our Hope and Healing Center. Okay. Talk about that. Yeah. So the Hope and Healing Center is our grief services. So a lot of people might not realize that we provide grief services to anybody who's experienced a loss in the communities. Okay. They don't have to have been under our hospice okay. services. Someone's passed away in the family, tragically, yeah. they need help. Mm -hmm. And that's what this, these mm -hmm. folks do. Now, what do they do there? Uh, Is they it counseling do, they do individual counseling. Okay. Uh, some of our counselors are trained in trauma counseling. Mm -hmm. So car accident victims, families, suicides, unfortunately, the opioid overdose mm -hmm. uh, victims, families. Um, we counsel all those people and we do not charge. We ask for a donation a if service. they're able. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to fundraise a hundred percent of that money too, okay. and as 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 people well know, there's a, unfortunately a lack of mental health services. Mm -hmm. um, Wait till we get out of this pandemic. You yeah. guys are getting. You should be busy, and I hope you right. are. Right. Hey, let me ask you. You and I talked before we st we went on the air. What is it about America? And I'm gonna say uh, I, I live in America. I've lived overseas, and overseas there's more acceptance of organizations like hospice, public health care whether it be mental or physical health. What do you think, or what can we do? I mean, every, I'm, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I, I'm sold on you guys. Everyone should go to hospice if they need help, right? Right. Uh, and especially when we get this pandemic in your other center. What do you think? Why, why, are, why are we Americans afraid to say, are we afraid of death? Yes, but you know, yes. why are we not using your services more? Well, um, there's lots of different reasons, mm -hmm. um, but I think that people being not only afraid of death, but not talking about death, okay. right? What do we, I was a health educator. I, mm -hmm. For about 20 years out to high school, I taught health. And we got to the unit in death and dying. 
uh, uh, the kit, and I was dealing with ninth graders, mandatory, everybody mm -hmm. took the course. It was, it was uh, a topic that didn't go over well. And for, like you mm -hmm. said, we don't talk about it. What do we need to do, you think, as a society to, it's part of life. I can guarantee right. one thing's going to happen to Fred McNeil in the next, who knows when, you're going to die. Right. And you have to accept that. Right. Now, I'm afraid like everybody else, but I also know the more information I get from people like you all, uh, the better me and my family will be able to accept this. Right. So w w what do we got to do? What do you think, Heather? Well, I think that we need to change our culture okay. and mm -hmm. change our philosophy on hospice care. Okay. Uh, people often think, oh, uh, if I accept hospice, that means I'm accepting the fact that I'm going to die or I'm going to die sooner or they're not going to give me any of my medications. Yeah. And that is all no. not no. true. We continue to treat people. People can continue to get certain treatments from their physicians. It's it's the... It's the uh, ability for people to say hospice is not about giving up hope no. it's about reframing your and helping hope. i had that i didn't mean to interrupt but helping you guys re i was i had my 93 year old mother mm -hmm. she had hygiene issues mm -hmm. she had um, i mean she had medication issues and your staff came in and didn't force her to do anything but help me make sure my mom uh, not only her bed was <laughs> taken care of, mm -hmm. well, you, gave, you gave us a bed. Yeah. I think, and I, I forget whether you gave us a walker or not, but the idea you arranged, I believe, hygiene for us. Yes. All these services, uh, was something about, you, like you say, we keep it in the back room, we don't talk about mm -hmm. it, but, and we all need help. Right. And we're all gonna die, I'm sorry. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you made a really good point, and that is that a hospice and end of life care is not just for the patient, it's for the entire oh, family unit. You guys, look at it was my wife and I mm -hmm. and our dog, okay, mm -hmm. Roosevelt at the time, and we didn't know what to do with the 93. They go through physical, maybe and you, if you want to address this, uh, you gave us a little blue book, I believe. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, gone from my sight. Okay, and a fantastic book, mm -hmm. and it basically spelled out for me what was going to happen. Right. And it, my mom got mad. She hated us. She right. was talking to a, a mythical friend. Right. All the things that were in your book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and thanks to you all, and I suggest this to everybody, they make this natural thing that's going to happen, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not. You spell out best about what's going to happen. Right. And as tough as it is to talk about it, Sometimes I just get the little blue book, shut the bathroom door and mm -hmm. say, this is the next stage. Right. And then when the nurse or ever would come and visit, you'd reinforce it. Yes. Right. Expect her to have. My mom had a mythical friend. Yeah. For, you know, but it was in your book. Right. Which is great. So you got, you have many of the answers yes. we have to take advantage of. Right. right. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, people think about hospice as like the last hours or days to no, life, no, but no. it is six months or less. Yeah, okay. And then we also started um, a supportive care program. Um, and that is for people who have a year or less. Okay. Right. Now, that's hard to judge. And oftentimes um, physicians are... Um, you know, they're trained to treat and to cure. Right. And it's oftentimes difficult for the physician also to give up, to quote, give up, if you will, or to let the patient know there's really no more treatments that are going to sustain life right. anymore. I think that's another shift in culture that we need to get to is that the physicians have the... They um, have to accept, don't they? It's a uh, part yes. of life, isn't it? It's, right? Yeah, and, and that they have the honest conversations earlier with their patients that you know this disease there's not a cure for and so a, a hospice or supportive care palliative care type program is the best thing for you now because they're they will make sure that you have the best quality of life with the time right. you have left right. because you, truly none of us know what time we have left no. you know i could drive out of here unfortunately and get hit by a car right. and i could be gone but that's the other thing that over the years over 25 years of my professional um, service to hospice is i can't tell you how many times families have told me we wish we would have gotten you uh -huh. earlier Had a, they we wait. didn't know we were like a neighbor told me about you guys right yeah. Everybody waits too long. They yeah. think, oh, they're not appropriate for hospice, but they've been appropriate for hospice a long, long, long time. Hey, if people watching this show are saying, yeah, this is beginning to make sense. If they're not sure of, am I eligible? Is my loved one eligible? Is my friend eligible? 
give them some advice. Which is, I mean, what yeah. do you want them to do? Yeah. So all you have to do is call us. Okay. If you Help, would, right? Yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong. And by the way, there's a stigma in America. If you go to a hospice or some of our public health care systems that that's not middle class, or that's not, that's mm -hmm. nonsense. If right. you need help, I don't care if you're Rockefeller or McNeil, right. Right? you ask for help and yes. you guys can give it. So you want them to pick up the phone and call. Yes, pick up the phone and call our office. Again, it's 443-262-4100. Just say you're inquiring about some assistance. You might fall under, your, you or your loved one might fall under our hospice program at that time. You might fall under our supportive Tell them care how, program. Yeah, I'm shocked at how organized you guys are. You make the phone call. What happens next? Then who who comes? Then the social worker. No. Me, okay. No. So so our 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 referral specialists in the office they okay, take all they okay. all take the information down. They ask you some questions, your address, okay. blah blah blah, your physician, and things of that nature. We contact the doctor and let them know that we are going to go out to do an evaluation. How do they feel about that? Do they okay. think the patient's appropriate? Blah blah blah, and then we send. Even same day, if the families oh, quick, if are I willing, yes. yeah. same day we'll send a nurse out to the house okay. to do an assessment and potentially an admission. And that means the once, same day. Same day. Are you listening out there? The same day. Pick up the phone if you need help. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The other great thing about about our services is that we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, so you can, you can call tonight. Yeah, you can call tonight. And once you're in our services, once you're mm -hmm. a patient, mm -hmm. your loved ones or you with a crisis, I'm not feeling good, I'm sick, I, I have pain, you you can get help 24 hours a day, seven days a week by just calling. Okay. And an on-call nurse will come out and see you, whether it's 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. or on a Sunday morning. That way you don't have to keep going back and forth to the hospital. Okay. Heather, the thing that surprised me, and we're going to stay in the same train of thought, the you have 10 beds at the center, but tell people, I fell out of the chair when I saw this, and you went, mm -hmm. how many people are you actually servicing? You're not servicing 10 people. What's no, that we, ballpark we, figure We now? service approximately 100 to 115 patients every day. And there are people who want to stay at home, or you've decided they should be at home. Well, the majority oh. of people want to stay in their own home okay. environment. People come into our hospice center, either in Centerville, or we have a four-bed facility in, in Kent County okay. in the hospital in Chestertown okay. that we've renovated, and we staff it with our staff. Okay. But most people want to stay home. So, so these services can come to your house. Yeah. You don't have to get in a car. You don't have to no. fight all the, someone didn't want to get a bed. Okay. I'm right. sorry. You keep going. Yeah. And the other great thing is, is that we are the medical professionals and we're coming in beside the patient and the family to help them to have the right. best quality of life for the time they have left. But we are by no means going to take over. Okay. Well, you, I thought, and again, a good advertisement for you. Everything that was said to my mom, and my mom lost some mental capacity mm -hmm. at the end. We would meet after her visit, and whether whoever it was, someone who was helping with hygiene or whatever the issues were, and then they'd tell us what happened, what mom said, and some interesting things. But the point is, right. you're working as a team, right? Yes. Family, loved ones, and the hospice. Yeah, right. and that's a good point, too, because hospice is really a holistic approach to care. Right. Um, so there is a team of professionals that each family and patient get. Now, that's your choice. You can right. accept some, or you can say, I don't need that right now. Right. But we have registered nurses. We have nurse practitioners. We have physicians. We have social workers. We have certified nursing assistants for the personal care. Uh, we have our volunteers. Make and sure we I didn't give wrong. Chaplains. Did you help with the hygiene? Was that hospice or am I wrong? No, we did. Yeah, because there was someone. Yeah. Uh, a lot of you out there, one of the tough things is all of a sudden your mom's not taking showers, your right. dad's not taking showers. They sent, you all sent professional staff. Yeah. I believe it was two or three times a week, yeah. I forget. Mm -hmm. Whatever your needs are. Yeah, made the bed, yeah. took care of mom's hygiene problems, yeah. and uh, that's a fantastic service because 74 year old men lifting 93 year old women, not a good move. And, not a good move. And how many 74 year old sons want to bathe their mother? No. or ha I, I didn't or, want to. No. Or does the mother want their son mom to bathe? Mom told them? me very clearly, right. I won't shower if you're involved. Right. I said, Mom, thank you. <laughs> Hell, hospice, <laughs> and you came through. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay, so that's another. I mean, it all fits into the thing, but it's important. And you're emphasizing family plus hospice. It's not yes. hospice crossing their arms and saying you got to do no. this, you got to do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. And we're there to support not only the patient through this 
period in their lives, but we're there to support the family right. and to make the caregiving. Caregiving is a burden. Oh, look, let's 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 face it. Let's we be had five honest. years of it, and I, I think, and many more people have gone through more difficult things than I've have. Uh, I was very fortunate. It's like having a child again. And yes. I don't know whether I can say that or not, but that's what it was like. Right. It was like my two or three-year-old person was a 93-year-old. Mm -hmm. And when she crossed her arms and says, what's happening to my Social Security? You had to explain it to her. But the next day, she'd say, who are you? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's so true. And, um, you know, the uh, oftentimes what will convince a person to accept hospice services is knowing that what kind of support their loved ones are going to get okay. and what kind of burden is going to be lifted off of them from being a caregiver all the time. Well, my mom would always say to me, thank goodness I have somebody come in and I, gave, I think they give them like a sponge bath. Yeah. You, might, you might know better, well, than, obviously we, now. You can do it in the bed, you okay. can do it, they can go in the shower, you know, in the home, whatever. But the good thing, best for them. everyone needs to know, we're not just talking you have to drive to Centerville every day or someplace at Kent County Hospital mm -hmm. or something. No, this can all come to your house. Yeah. And all the services, you, you're thinking that, oh, I'm going to get it. This. No, no, you're going to get it at your house. Right. right? Which I think and, and, and that's a great point, too, because the majority of our patients are in their home environment. Yes. Yeah. But when you say home environment, this is key, too, because people don't think about it. We go into nursing homes right. and assisted living homes, too. Oh, do you really? Okay. Yes. So just because your loved one might be in a nursing home setting or an assisted living... You still get the help. Yes. Okay. You get additional help through hospice. We come Good. alongside of those caregivers to make the experience even better. Okay. Heather, we've got five minutes. We've got plenty of time. Let me ask you, where is hospice going in the future? Oh, you're going to get bigger, obviously, yes? Or do you I, want to get yeah. bigger or not? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the how, boomers are coming. Mm -hmm. Lord help you when us boomers. I mean, it's <laughs> going to get ugly. I mean, they're all like me. I don't know what you're going to do. But right. what are the children going to do when so many of us, what, from 1946 to 64, they boomers, right. we're all aging here. And yes. So this, the numbers are going to put amazing pressure yeah, on you. Yeah, I, I, I think they will, and I believe truly that hospice and palliative care is going to grow across yeah. the nation because we are trying to find ways as a medical system to keep people out of the walls of a hospital. Yes. Don't keep going back. We don't back. have enough hospitals. We don't right. have enough doctors right. anymore. Right. right. And yeah. hospitals aren't getting reimbursed the same anymore. No. They're no. not, they're, if, if people continuously go back for the same diagnosis and the same need to an emergency room, instead of being managed effectively in the home environment, which is what we do, right. Right. Uh, the hospitals won't get paid for that. So we, we think of ourselves as a, a strong healthcare partner with our hospital systems as well to um, try to keep patients at the right place at the right time in the right yeah. treatment. I'm very selfish. All those boomers, we're going to need help. Yeah. And I want these kids to know I can go to hospice. Right. And guess what? We're going to bathe your dad. We're going to make sure the medications are right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cover issues from A to Z and mm -hmm. going to make it easier. Right. Yeah. Now, look, I've talked to educators. Let's go to the pandemic. 2020 and 2021 have been a bit. How has hospice has affected you in terms of... Oh, yes. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> how? Just how? Well, obviously, we've had COVID patients. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, you had COVID patients at hospice? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And in their home environments. Okay. We've had um, caregivers and families that have tested positive for COVID when mm -hmm. we're coming into the homes. Mm -hmm. Um, it has been challenging for us because it is very stressful for our staff. You know, they're going home to their families, their children. Everyone's and, afraid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, just helping to alleviate people's anxiety and stress, continuing to increase our workforce and not decrease it so mm -hmm. that we have enough you employees. You kept everybody? Were you able to keep we, everybody? We kept everybody. Well, good fuel. Good fuel. Um, and we are, we are constantly hiring. We good. always need certified well, nurses. I saw your assistants. website. Yeah, terrific. That's yeah, good. nurses, social okay. workers, yes. Um, but um, through the pandemic, I, I have to say I have to be very proud of our organization good. because we pivoted quickly um, to go from all in the office and all in person with oh. patients to remote. Oh, you had to go out there to everybody. Mm -hmm. Did you take, were, were people actually at the center during this Yes, oh, the were. whole time. Oh, they were. The okay. whole time. We oh, okay. limited, we limited Never visitors. Never shut the doors for... Never okay. shut the doors. 
we limited visitors. People obviously had to mask mandated. Okay. Um, we got people vaccinated as you know quickly as possible. Our staff as well as advocating for the the rest of the community to get vaccinated okay. um, to help uh, get us to the herd immunity. So you kept going. The services yeah. kept going. And, just you went and home. we implemented telehealth for the first time. Oh, tell ever. about telehealth. Come yeah. On. So we had all, hospice had never been an industry that allowed telehealth. Okay. You couldn't, explain you couldn't, what, if we don't know what telehealth, what is that? Telehealth is communicating via a computer. Okay. Live with okay, patient Okay, so you're online family. With, a, with a family yes, or a patient. Yes, you can okay. see them. They okay. see you. Like a Zoom meeting with a yes. doctor or a hospice. Yes, okay. yes. So we we bought a telehealth platform. We got all of our providers on laptops so that we were able to continuously connect with and our patients and families. And you even did families. training. I mean, I did my training yep. and, and a number did, of other people did, were Zooming. We yeah. did Zoom meetings Terrific. for training. We went to Zoom for all of our staff meetings and everything else Good. to keep our staff um, support it during these times. So you adjusted like mm -hmm. all of us did, right? Yeah, kept going. Well, yes. good for you. Now, Heather, I've got about a minute left, or they're going to pull the plug on me. That's that's kind of recap here. If you want to volunteer, someone's seen this show. Hey, I might like to help with the kitchen. Maybe help at a front desk. Maybe work at this retail store. Maybe yada yada yada. What do you want them to do? I want them to call four four three. 262-4100 okay. and ask for Robin Afron, okay. who's our volunteer coordinator. And training, if you get interested, is delightful. Now, if I'm the other group, if I'm at home, you know what, I think I might be eligible for this type of stuff for a member of my family. Uh, what do you want them to do? Same thing. Call 443-262-4100 okay. and just simply tell the person who answers the phone that you're calling to inquire about our services. Okay. And uh, general questions, same thing. Yep. All, and the website. Is a big, yes. I thought your website's great. Yep. We, we have updated our website most recently, so we have a lot of different resources on there. So you can go on the website as well. You can also um, request us to contact you through our website. Okay. And like we said before, you can give donations on our website. Okay. And there's golf tournaments, and you'll be delighted to accept any type of donation, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. Volunteer, folks, down volunteer. Yeah. Well, look, I've got to get okay. out of here. Okay, no, one, no, 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 we got time. Thing, I just well, want to put one plug in for our plug. Camp New Dawn. Oh, yes. Camp go, New go. Dawn is our grief camp for children. Okay, terrific uh, program. It was, it was canceled last year because of COVID. It is on this year. It's tell them what, tell them, yeah. It's in August. Okay. And it we used to be an overnight camp at Camp Pocomath mm -hmm. here outside mm -hmm. of Centerville. But this year is going to be four day camps okay. so that they're not going to have people spend the night just because Good of COVID idea. again. So if anybody is interested, if you know somebody whose child is grieving, again, they do not have to experience a loss through hospice. It could be any kind of loss, traumatic, car accident, car accident COVID, whatever. Yes. COVID, um, suicide, drug overdose. They need again call and contact our phone number at 443-262-4100 okay. and just let them know that they're inquiring about our Camp New Dawn for Children. Okay. Now, anything else you want to cover, Heather? I think that's it. I know I the guy you, behind Fred. the booth. So we're gonna, no, thank you for coming. And look, let me encourage everybody. I've had personal experience with hospice with my family, uh, my mother, and through the training. It's a wonderful program. We can all volunteer somewhere. We can pull out our wallets and send a check, or maybe we can help retail sales. If nothing else, guys, come on, we can go out and play some golf. <laughs> Ladies, we can go out and play some golf. Well, Heather, thank you for coming, and thank you're welcome you. to come in. I know you use QAC7, but you know you can come here anytime, maybe for the summer camp. Right. And get somebody to come in and talk about that. Yeah, that'd be I'd, great. I'd love to do that, okay? Wonderful. Look, at, thank you for watching QAC TV7. I hope you've learned a lot about Compass or Hospice. How do you want me to say it? I, we, Teddy and I are arguing. Do you say Compass, Hospice, or Hospice? Just say Compass. Compass, okay. It's in Centerville. It's a delightful site, and the services will help you and the ones you love. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for your time. My time's up. We're going to see you next time. <laughs>